Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to take a look at a Christmas themed puzzle, but of course you could use this at any time of the year just by replacing a few of the Christmas ideas that are in it. Now I want to build a quest around this. I feel that the puzzle itself is explained better if I build a little bit of a story around it. So what I'd like to do for you today is begin this video by explaining a quest or setting up a quest that hopefully your players will take the bait for and then we'll go into the puzzle and then we'll build on that puzzle and include some more quest ideas at the end of the video. So this one I'd like to call Gifts for the Past. So let's begin our Christmas story by the characters walking into a tavern. You enter the old tavern. The waning glow of the fireplace along with a few dim lanterns light this dreary establishment. You feel an unexplained dose of sorrow as you look about the room. A human bartender is slumped over, napping in a corner behind the bar with a hint of a snore, occasionally escaping his slumber. The only patron of this tavern is an old, white-bearded gnome sitting by himself at a large round table. The elderly fellow notices you, takes a drink from his glass of milk, and motions for you to join him. So this old gnome is gonna need the character's help. They can tell by looking at him that his body is weak and his mind is starting to go. But he does have just enough left to tell the characters a story. He explains to the characters that there is an orphanage on the other side of town, probably houses anywhere from three to six kids. And every year, about this time, he takes gifts to those kids. Now, this year he is unable to do that, both physically and mentally. But he'll take a big old bag and put it on top of the table. And he'll reach in and he'll pull out five items. Now the old gnome will tell the characters, It is very important for these children to get these gifts. These gifts will shape their future. There are five gifts in this bag. Make sure that you give each child the appropriate gift. Now at this point, the characters can either want to see the magical items or they can just grab the bag, accept the quest, and go on their way. Now of course, if they don't accept either one, then our story is over with at this point. But I'm hoping that your characters are going to play along with this quest and idea. So if they ask the gnome to look at the items, the five items are a wand, a stuffed bear, a wooden hammer with a holy symbol on it, a pair of shoes, and a lute. Now, each of these items are magical, and if they communicate with the gnome before they leave, maybe he would demonstrate a couple of these, all excited about how these items work. And of course, you as the DM can make these magical in however you see fit, keeping in mind, of course, that these are gonna be delivered to six, seven, eight-year-old children. What I've come up with, and some help from my friends Immortal Origins and Foric, we had a uh, slight discussion on the on the Discord channel, was the wand makes a is a wand of bubbles. So on command, it can make bubbles, and uh, perhaps we can make these bubbles bring up an armor class or something like that. The magical loot would probably, if played, maybe it would summon. Uh, 1d6 fairies and maybe these fairies can either protect whoever's playing the loot or maybe grant some uh, some type of healing or things of that nature the stuffed bear we had a lot a really good discussion about the stuffed bear perhaps the stuffed bear if uh, once attuned to they can make it transform into a stuffed dog or a cat or an owl or perhaps we could have the stuffed bear kind of like a familiar where it can get up and walk around and the whoever's attuned to it could actually see through the stuffed bear's eyes or something along those lines. Now the wooden hammer has a holy symbol on it and we're going to make that holy symbol the symbol of the dwarven god. And the shoes, they look like normal shoes for, for a child 
but they make no noise. You can even slap them together and there's no noise when you slap so them. So these are like elven boots or slippers of stealth or something along those lines where whoever's walking in them makes no noise. So now that the characters have the bag of magical items, they go on to the orphanage and they follow the directions given to them by the gnome. And when they come upon the address, they look and all that they see is an abandoned building. You arrive at the address of the orphanage. The building looks to be abandoned. Windows are missing or boarded up, and the lawn has not been attended to in years. The old stairs creak and crack as you approach the front door. As you take a moment to gather your thoughts, you experience a feeling of, emor of emotional warmth and realize that you are in a safe place. The key that the old gnome gives you fits perfectly into the lock, and you enter the main room of the vacant orphanage. So our characters are tasked with delivering these five items, kind of like a, kind of like Santa Claus would the night before Christmas. And they're supposed to deliver these items to these five kids in the orphanage. However, when they get to the orphanage, they find out that it's abandoned. But feeling the warmth and that there's just a feeling of that they need to go inside this building, they walk inside. And yes, it's vacant, it's abandoned, it has cobwebs, it's dusty and things of that nature. But there's one part that's not like that. And that is the fireplace. In fact, there's a warm, cozy fire crackling in the fireplace. And above the mantle of the fireplace are five stockings. Okay, so here is an example of a layout for an orphanage. And we've got some old bedrooms over here. We've got the, the main room and these are our three characters that have come in. And here is the fireplace and above the mantle of this fireplace. And don't forget that it is already lit and there's actually fire in there and everything's staying warm. But above that, there are these five stockings and rudely drawn here. And if our characters look at the stockings, they're going to see names at the very top of them. And these are just the names that I came up with. I highly suggest that you come up with your own names for the characters. We have Rurik Battlehammer. We have Thea. We have William. We have Sarah. And we have Gilbert Swift Whistle. So just to recap, we have the Wand of Bubbles, the Shoes of Stealth, or the Boots of Stealth, or Elven Boots, whatever you want to name them. We have the Wooden Hammer with the Dwarven Holy Simple inscribed on it. We have a stuffed bear and we have a magical child size loot. And then we have our five names down below. So with the information provided, can you solve the puzzle? I'll give you a second if you'd like to figure it out. Did you get it? Wow, outstanding. Because I haven't even given you the clues yet. But a couple of them are going to be fairly easy. So let's go ahead and discuss the clues and look at some of the obvious things. So our first obvious thing is Rorik Battlehammer. Now I kind of just pulled this out for the simplicity of demonstrating this puzzle, but you may want to pick a different dwarven last name than Battlehammer, but pick something maybe that the characters have met or the players have encountered before. So I kind of went with knowing that this sounds like a dwarven name, Rorik Battlehammer. And of course our wooden hammer has the holy symbol of the dwarven god on there. So that is actually our first clue. So we can connect the hammer with Rurik Battlehammer. And again, I gave him this last name just for simplicity of the puzzle. You may want to come up with something else. And Xanathar's Guide to Everything has a bunch of clan names for your dwarves. So you may want to pick something else for that. And hopefully something, like I said, that your players have heard before. Now for the rest of them, we have William and Sarah. Those kind of sound like human names. And over here we have Gilbert Swift Whistle. And if your players or characters are familiar with halfling names, or if you want to allow them to roll some kind of ability score check, they could probably figure out that this is a clan name for halflings. And then Thea with elven names. Elves, when they're children, they have a different name than when they are adult. And again, using Xanathar's Guide to Everything, I picked Thea from the elven children's name and went with that. But that still doesn't help us decide which of these items go in which stocking. Even though we have a magic wand, our halfling, our two humans, or our elf, any one of them can be a wizard. We have some shoes of stealth. Again, any one of those four could be a rogue. 
So how do we get our characters or our players to solve this puzzle? Well, that is going to come in the form of clues. Now, some of the clues that I've thought of, and I am going to give you a handful of them, and a little bit different from my normal puzzles, these aren't set in stone. There, I may be giving you too many clues, or I may be not giving you enough clues. And it's going to be up to you as the dungeon master to try to figure out which clues you want to give. But here's a few that I came up with. I'm going to have my players have their characters search around this old abandoned orphanage. And if they come over to this desk, there's going to be a stack of books here. And if they're reading through the books, there's going to be books about abjuration. There's going to be books about arcane magic. There's going to be maybe maybe even a couple of old spell scrolls there. But they're going to see that it looks like someone that is really trying to study to become a wizard. Those kind of books are going to be here. And if they open up the front page and on the inside cover of all of these books is going to be a name written. And that name is Thea. So with the clue that Thea's name is written in all these wizard books, the players should figure out that the wand should go to a wizard. And so we're going to take the wand and put it in Thea's stocking. And again, the hammer is going to go into Rurik's stocking. Now, the other way that I thought about giving clues out was through visions. So perhaps when the characters get here, they hear a piano playing and they come into this room. Let's just say that this is our piano. And as they come in here, they see a a small halfling child sitting at a piano and he's playing a tune and if they fail to sneak up on this this spirit of this halfling he'll turn around look at him and dissipate and disappear but since they've seen a halfling playing this piano they should be able to figure out that this halfling name Gilbert Swift Whistle will probably be a bard when he grows up because he's interested in music and therefore they should give him the loot. Now another clue that I thought of was perhaps as the adventuring party are investigating and they're looking around these rooms. Maybe there are things in this room. Maybe they see another vision. If they haven't figured out the, the hammer yet, maybe there's a vision of holy symbols in this room that come to life. And as they're looking at these holy symbols in here, they see a small dwarven child praying before he goes to bed. And since they're seeing him pray, they'll know that he'll probably become a cleric someday, again, tying it to the hammer. But one of the cool ideas that I think would, would be awesome is as these characters are exploring the orphanage, and again, make this as big as you want. Make, make a whole game session out of it. Maybe there's all kinds of different things to explore and find and stuff like that. Give them some red herring, some false clues and stuff. But as they're searching stuff, maybe then they come back out in this room. And if they roll high enough perception, maybe there is like a little human girl that has been watching them this whole time. In fact, we could lead up to that by saying you feel like you are being watched. And if they don't roll high enough perception, they're not going to find her. But eventually they do. They, and after so many times of being told that they're feeling watched, they finally see her. And the reason they finally still see her is because she is very stealthy. She can sneak up on people. Or maybe even she tries to pick one of their pockets. So they can tell that this little human girl is a good candidate to be a rogue when she gets older. And since we have two human names, we have William and Sarah. And Sarah is usually a, is usually a female human name. Then we could draw the conclusion that Sarah could eventually become a rogue someday and we should give the elven boots or the shoes of stealth or whatever you call them that make you walk silently when you wear them we would give these shoes to Sarah now we could stop there through the process of elimination if we've got all four of these figured out already we're going to be able to tell that William is the last one, and since there's a stuffed bear left, then William is probably going to be the druid, and he should get the stuffed bear. So the whole key to solving the puzzle is to decide which magic item goes to which class. So the characters are going to need to figure out that the wand of bubbles should go to the wizard. The elven boots or the shoes of stealth would go to a rogue. The wooden hammer with the holy symbol to the dwarven god would go to a cleric. The stuffed bear would go to a druid and a magical instrument, a lute or whatever you decide would go to a bard. 
And once they figure out that combination, then they need to figure out what each one of the five children want to be when they grow up. The dwarf wants to become devoted to the dwarven god, so he would become a cleric. Thea is studying all these books. She wants to become a wizard, so she would get the wand. William is a druid. Maybe you have a a scene or a vision of William helping some animals, or perhaps William has his name in this room over here, and there's all kinds of different books on animals, maybe a bunch of plant life, stuff like that. But let the characters figure out that William wants to be a druid someday, so the druid would get the stuff bare. Sarah, have her running around, have the party eventually meet her. In fact, if they ask her her name, she will say, my name is Sarah, so that will help. She's like, I'm Sarah, and I'd like to be a rogue someday, or whatever you decide. But they should decide that Sarah is going to be a rogue. She would get the elven boots. And, of course, Gilbert Swift Whistle is the halfling bard. So once the characters put the items in the stockings, the items disappear. And what's happening here is these items are going into the past. So... 20 years ago, when these, the orphanage was up and running, and these five children were there, they're going to wake up the next day, and the items that the characters put in the stockings, hopefully correctly, are going to appear, and they're going to have it. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the future of these kids. So what I'm thinking is if the characters get all five of the correct items in the correct stockings, then they're going to leave the orphanage, they're going to go back to the tavern, but this time when they go there, there's going to be a lot of people there. And the table that the old gnome was sitting at, there's going to be five adventurers sitting there. There's going to be a wizard, a cleric, a bard, a druid, and a rogue. And they're going to just smile. They're going to look at the adventuring party. And then they're going to all look over at the fireplace in the, in the, in the tavern. And if the adventurers go over there, they'll see that there are stockings hung above the mantel. And if they look at these stockings, each one has, the, has one of the characters' names on it. And this is where you, as a DM, get to, reward with, get to reward them with a magical item. And if the players solve the puzzle correctly, then I would probably give them something that they have been wanting for a long time, like a magical sword for a fighter and some, some kind of a powerful wand for, for a wizard or, or things of that nature. Now, what happens if they did not get all five items in the correct stocking? Well, I would probably go as far as to say that everything pretty much stays the same as far as when they're done. They go back to the tavern. It's kind of lively. But when they go to that table where the gnome is, is, was sitting at, only the ones they got correct are sitting there. So if they correctly matched up the wand to the wizard, the stuffed bear to the druid, and the hammer to the cleric, only those three characters are going to be sitting there. The other two aren't going to be with them. And they're probably not going to look as happy, but they're still going to nod over to the fireplace. And the characters can go over to the fireplace. They'll see a stocking with their name on it. But this time around, instead of it's a, a powerful magic item that they may have wanted or something that the characters have desired for a while, this time it's maybe a potion. Maybe they all get a healing potion or a growth potion or, or something like that. So... We're still rewarding the players, but since the puzzle wasn't correct, they're not getting the full reward. Now, what happens if they get all of them wrong, or if the characters decide, you know what, that wand of bubbles is really cool. I'm going to swap it out for this stick. I'm going to give this kid the stick, and I'm going to keep the wand of bubbles. Or maybe they don't put the items in any of the stockings at all, and they keep them all, or they sell them, or something like that. Well, this is what I would have happen, and of course you as the DM can come up with your own consequences for the characters being malicious and keeping these items from the kids. But here's what I came up with. I would have them come back, and those five characters are sitting there, and they may look over at those stockings again, and probably not looking very happy, and the characters would go over there, and there would be stockings with their names on it, and on the inside of each stocking is a lump of coal. And if they turn around and look at those where those characters were again, they're probably going to be gone. And I would probably go as far as to make some of those, like the, the wizard that didn't get his wand of bubbles, or the druid that didn't get his stuff bear, the rogue that didn't get his slippers of stealth, I would go as far as to have them cross paths. They actually became adventurers, yes, but they're evil adventures, or they 
become a villain or antagonist of the of the adventuring party. And somewhere down the line in your campaign or your game, they're going to run into these characters again, and then they're going to piece two and two together by not giving them their items or trying to swap it out or be tricky like that, that there's going to be consequences for their actions. And of course, if that's too much for you, maybe they go back to the tavern and it's the exact same as when they left. There's just the uh, the old gnome in there and the bartender. But this time when they go in there, the old gnome, he, he looks physically healthy again. Um, his mind is back and maybe he's just really pissed off. And he looks over and he points points, you know, like death pointing or something, points over to the stockings. And again, they get their lump of coal or something like that. And perhaps maybe a curse comes down upon them. I would also maybe later on in that adventure or in the future, if the characters did get all five of them correct and solve the puzzle uh, successfully, maybe they walk by that orphanage again. And now it's, now it's, uh, it's open and the lawn is well taken care of, the building's in great shape, and there's other kids that are out playing around. So by them solving the puzzle and sending those items into the past, the future brings back all kinds of cool little changes. Now before we wrap up, just one more idea that I had was let's make the quest meaningful. So perhaps prior to the very beginning of the puzzle quest, before they meet the gnome, maybe along the way, the rogue tries to pick their pockets. Maybe she looks famished. She's been living on the streets a long time and she tries to sneak up and maybe steal, steal a coin purse from one of the characters or something. She doesn't have any weapons on her. She's just trying to trying to survive. For the other for the other four children we can do this too. Perhaps the evil wizard is already a villain of the characters and by going back and successfully solving this puzzle and sending that wand of bubbles so that the so that Thea the wizard will have that when she wakes up the next day, they come back to to the tavern and the villain, you know, Thea the the wizard, this villain that they've known and they've, you know, had encounters with before is now suddenly a good guy and maybe even a friend of the party so they changed the the past that way for the better perhaps william the druid instead of becoming a druid just becomes a groundskeeper with no friends or family and and he tends to the graveyard or something like that so perhaps the characters were at the at a grave site before and they recognize william as the groundskeeper of the cemetery for the dwarf rurik Maybe Rurik is an alcoholic. He's always drinking too much and starting bar brawls. So the characters recognize this dwarf from before. And again, by sending that item into the past for Rurik as a child, they change his, his whole future. So now he's not an alcoholic and bar brawls. He may still like to have the occasional drink or two, but now he's a successful cleric and a successful adventurer. So let's wrap things up. Again, at the heart of this, it's a puzzle, but I put a, a quest around it, a story, if you will, where the adventurers may have encountered these five people before, and they're all downtrodden and down on their luck. And then they go into this old tavern, they meet this gnome, they accept this quest to, to go take these items to the orphanage. They get to the orphanage, they find it abandoned, but still they go inside, they, they figure out what item goes to what Christmas stocking, they put the correct item in there, those disappear, teleport back into the past when the orphanage was alive maybe 20 years ago and each of those children received that item and it just changes their entire future they the, the one of bubbles makes thea want to become a wizard the stuffed bear makes william want to become a druid and and things like that and so when the characters are done they go back to the tavern and they find it already changed it's a lively place and Everybody's having a good time. And then they meet and recognize those five adventurers. And then they point over to the stocking and you reward your players with a fantastic magical item. So that's what I came up with for my Christmas puzzle. I went through a lot of variations and a lot of brainstorming. It was honestly one of the hardest puzzles I've ever put together. I did hop on my Discord server and I had some great brainstorming session with Fowrick and Immortal Origins. Those guys stayed up late because they are on the other side of the world as compared to me being here in the United States. And I appreciate that, guys. Thank you for doing that. And the three of us had a lot of fun discussing this puzzle. They gave me some great ideas. And in the end, this is what I came up with. So that's all I have for you today. What do you think of the puzzle? What 
changes would you make? Is there a different story that you would wrap around it? Do you think that you could use this outside of the holiday or the Christmas season? Be sure to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think of this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't joined our Discord server, there's a link for it below, so come and hang out with us. And I believe that's all I have for you today. Merry Christmas, and on to the next.